Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. We are back with Tina Wonky talking about all of her wellness coaching, her transformations, her integrative services that she can help you with. And of course, as always, she's here to help reclaim power over your health. We're going to talk about health, about sleep, and so much more. Uh, first and foremost, uh, our founder of Roots and Healing is live here today. Hey, Tina, how yeah. are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. <laughs> how are you doing today and this week? How's everything? Going well, going well. We got some nice weather now after we got rid of all the rain and everything. So um, we just had that in <laughs> New York sun. and you're in, it's Wisconsin, right? Wisconsin. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, pleasure yeah. to have you back. Always yeah. a pleasure to have you here and uh, have another great conversation. Uh, for those new timers out there, just give us a little overview as to Roots of Healing and the services you yeah. can provide. Yeah. So Roots of Healing is, um, is my business where um, I try to help people reclaim power over their health. Mm -hmm. I'm a holistic therapist and a wellness coach. So I try to take an approach of looking at the whole person and to identify what might benefit them the most to help them address whatever issue is going on. Okay. So I take an approach of using uh, traditional therapy, hypnotherapy, a tuning fork. So that sound healing aspect, um, energy work with Reiki mm -hmm. uh, and holistic that um, wellness coaching, addressing what you're eating and how that's influencing your mental health. Got it. It's an overall system, including yes. our sleep, which I know is something yes. <laughs> near and dear to your heart. We're talking about that today. Uh, remind yeah. us how we can reach out to you. Yes. You can reach me at my website of rootsofhealing.org. Otherwise you can contact me via phone 920-277-6738. Beautiful. All right. So for today, let's get started. Uh, the connection yeah. of our mental health and sleep. It's pretty great, yeah. right? T tell us why sleep is so many important, uh, so many yeah. um, is so important. And there's a lot of yeah. reasons why. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I mean, sleep, we need sleep. We need sleep to rest, reset, to recharge. And if you've ever experienced not getting enough sleep, like you almost get to a you can get to it. Well, you can get to a point where you're almost like hallucinating in that you can be hallucinating when you go too long without sleep, like sleep is vital for us. We need to rest. That's the time when the body repairs, it replenishes its energy. And if you're not getting that sleep, it's going to impact you physically and emotionally. And when we look at this idea of sleep, one of the things I just want to point out right away is that quality of sleep is huge versus quantity. You know, we get stuck. It's supposed to be, you know, everybody says eight hours of sleep, eight hours of sleep and recommendation is seven to nine, but sometimes people need a little less, you know, it just varies from person to person, but the key issue is to make sure that the quality of your sleep, like you're getting good sleep so that you are cycling the way you need to throughout the night, because we do cycle, our body does go through different um, stages in order, in order to help repair, replenish the body, um, to process all the things that have gone through our mind through the day or previous to that day, things we're thinking about, all of those things happen while we're sleeping too. So we got to give sleep a lot more credit than um, we sometimes do. <laughs> Interesting, because then it's, well, how much sleep do we need? What type of sleep it, do we need that's the best for us, right? Because I know there's that further sleep, like the REM or whatever. Could you talk? I don't know what yep. that means. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So there's the different stages of um, sleep that we have is we have non-REM and then we have REM. So um, REM is rapid eye movement. So that's when if you see somebody sleeping and you might see their eyes kind of like moving around and everything, um, that's the part of um, the stage of sleep that's called REM. So the first three stages are the non-REM. So this is where um, the brain, like you're just starting to drift off. You're kind of in that light stage. I know I've had it where um, I'm like, I feel like I'm almost going to go to sleep. And then for some reason, I kind of like bounce awake and I'm like, darn it. Like, why didn't I just, you know, fall asleep? So we have that first stage where we're falling asleep. And then the second stage that we have is light sleep. This is where we spend 
50% um, of our time sleeping. So like a traditional sleep cycle runs about 90 minutes. Okay. So 50% of that 90 minutes is should be in on average that light sleep stage. And when we're in that light sleep stage, that's a time like where your body temperature can change. So, and your heart rate can decrease. So if you have any kind of watch or anything that, you know, monitors your sleep, it's pretty cool to see um, how long you're in each of the stages, you know, your body temperature range, how it changed and that heart rate. So it's, it's just very interesting to actually like actually see, you know, what happened while you were yeah. sleeping. And also during that light sleep is also where we're processing memories. Like it's, it's starting to begin where we're starting to process those memories. And in the third stage of this first part, um, this is the deep sleep. So this is where you're like really, you know, in that heavy sleep where you are repairing on the physical side. Okay. So like 13 to 23% of our um, sleep happens in the deep state, in the deep sleep stage. And this is where physically we're restoring muscle repair growth. Okay. Um, immune system, your energy restorations, getting those, that energy replenished, releasing growth hormones. So if you're, you know, like, especially when you're growing, it's important to get a good night's sleep because that's when those growth hormones are kicking into gear. So those are the first three non-REM. Then there's the REM stage. And in the REM stage, it's like 20 to 25% of our time that we're spending in this area. And this is where you'll see the eyes kind of moving all over the place. And the, um, mm -hmm. the mind is thinking is what's happening. There's brain, the brain activity level. I found this interesting brain activity level is actually similar to like when you're awake. Really? So, and you would think it wouldn't be, you know, cause we're so active during the, I mean, we're constantly yeah. thinking during the day, our brain's still working when we're sleeping. And there's also what's called uh, muscle atonia, where we get like almost into that, like um, almost like paralysis kind of like state. So if you ever have woken up or you feel like you're coming out of like a dream or something, you feel like you can't move where you're like just um, frozen. Um, that's in this part where you're probably coming out of the REM stage asleep. And I've had that happen a few times and I'm just like, oh, this is like just weird and funky feeling, you know, I'm like, I feel like I can't move. Um, but it's like, you're still in that sleep state when you're noticing that. And the vivid dreams that you have, like those, like dreams, you wake up and you remember them, those, you know, those very vivid dreams, those occur during this time. And then you are processing emotions during the REM state. You're, you're processing those emotions from the day, from what's happened. If you wake up in the middle of the night with an idea where you're just like, oh my God, you know, like jot it down, take and jot it down. So we cycle through light sleep that, um, then they had, um, well, going into sleep, that light sleep, that like 50% marker to mm -hmm. deep sleep, to light sleep, to run sleep. So we just go through that cycle about 90 minutes and then we start it over again. Interesting. Thank you for sharing this. I always wonder like, um, you know, and then there's some, but some bodies, bodies actually work on less sleep than others. And that's also fascinating to me because yeah. I have a friend who gets up at uh, four in the morning every day and goes to bed at 11 o'clock at night. I'm like, how? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I Look, I used to be that person working morning news, but then I would be exhausted after taking yeah. naps or like, but yeah. And, and I want to ask about nap well, after you finish this, but are, are naps helpful or not? Naps can be helpful. Yep. Yeah. I mean, if you need a nap, if you feel like you need one, your body's telling you, you need to rest. So just shooting for like a 20 minute, 30 minute nap, um, just, just a short little nap can help make a huge difference. But if you go too long, like a full cycle, then you can be more droggy coming out of it and feeling just kind of off. So 20 to 30 minutes is usually a key marker for taking a nap, but if you need it, go for it. <laughs> Got it. All right. Thank you for that. Um, what else are the benefits of sleep? Uh, what else did you want to add to this? Yeah. So, well, I want to go into that part There's, of talking about like, just like when we're not getting good sleep. So like if we're disrupting, us. 
Yeah. What? Like we're, we're... I think I'm joking. I'm like, yeah. I, I'll be like, wait, <laughs> children get good sleep last night. It's affecting our mental health. No, I right. did last night, but yes, I want to hear. Yeah. What, how is that affecting things? Yeah. So when we have a disruption in REM sleep, and this can come from different things, um, there can be increased emotional instability, impaired memory and learning. And it, so that's impacting our mental health. So just by not getting good REM sleep, and like I said, you could track it on a watch and you can see, you know, where you're at. So you can mm-hmm. see if that might be influencing some emotional, um, frustrations that you're having, emotional anxiety, anything like that. And any struggles with that memory or learning aspect, it might be because you're not getting good REM sleep. And what, um, when we have that poor sleep, it impacts our mental health. So it can make our mental health symptoms worse. It can impair, just like I said before, if you're not getting enough REM sleep, it can um, impair cognitive function. So your ability to pay attention, to make decisions uh, for memory retention, and then increasing irritability, mood swings, you're more susceptible to stress. And it just increases those chances for mental health disorders to happen. So we really want to make sure that our sleep is in a good place and we're, we're checking out and seeing, you know, how, how we're doing, if we're sleeping well or not. So if you're waking up feeling repressed, feeling refreshed, then there's a good chance that you probably are getting a good night's sleep. But if you're waking up still droggy, there's probably something within your slight sleep cycle that probably isn't um, tuning in the best that it could for your body. Got it. All right. Thank you so much. Interesting. Because what are some other signs? I mean, the grogginess, the, now I'm going to yawn. If I talk about yawning, I yawn, uh, but <laughs> it does make you a little slower. Like mentally, I just feel off if I don't get enough sleep. Yeah. And I'm sure most yep. of us feel that way and not as productive. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Not getting as much done. So when we, um, this connection to, um, sleep and emotions, I want to take it to the level of suppressing your emotions. So when we're suppressing our emotions, like we're not dealing with our emotions, then um, our sleep is getting disrupted. Because what happens is when we suppress those emotions, we're causing an increased stress response, our body's feeling more stressed because we're holding those in. Mm -hmm. So like whenever you know, like you've if you've ever held things in, held things in, and then all of a sudden it's just like, just comes all spilling out, you know, it's because you were suppressing them and not dealing with them when you should have been. So it's just a compilation, but that's all increasing the stress response in the body. And then it can lead to elevated um, blood pressure, increased heart rate, uh, muscle tension, you know, you're suppressing those emotions, Um, increased anxiety in that. There's like, there's just so many things. And when it comes to sleep, it can cause nightmares, um, disturbing dreams. And then it reduces the amount of REM sleep because that emotional suppression is it's altering that balance within those sleep stages. So it can lead to then long-term issues, whether it's mental health or physical. So important just to look at your emotions and what's happening. And uh, a ex- couple examples that I have from in the past with clients, I had an elderly gentleman that came in um, to address his depression. And I mean, it was to the point he was just breaking down, crying in the middle of um, a store or church or any, you know, just he would just start crying. And that was it. Well, we were talking about his depression and what came up is sleep apnea. So. I said, he said he had sleep apnea. And and then I said, you have sleep apnea. And he go, and then he just literally looked at me and he said, should I get my machine out of the closet? And I'm like, it's in your closet. I'm like, this could be completely causing the depression. And he got his sleep apnea machine out and literally his depression went away because he was lacking in getting good quality sleep, getting that oxygen and everything. And it just made a huge difference for him and didn't need medication to fix the problem. It was a natural solution. Oh, wow. Yeah. So like it really solutions. Yeah. It, I mean, it just <laughs> made, yeah, it was just like a huge, 
at like night and day change. It was unbelievable. So I'm, I'm hoping he's still, if he is still around, that was a while ago. I'm hoping he's still using machine if he is. <laughs> Got it. Oh, good story. I love hear. I love hearing, you know, uh, stories, personal stories, people you've worked with. And of course, you know, real life situations. And uh, by mm -hmm. the way, if you are just tuning in, we have to remind everyone uh, yes. rootsofhealing.org. How do we contact you, uh, call yeah. you social media wise, and then we'll continue. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, you can go to my website at rootsofhealing.org and you can contact me through the form that's on the bottom of the page. Otherwise, you can call me at 920-277-6738. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right, let's continue. Again, we're here talking about, uh, well, sleep and mental yeah. health and, uh, you know, what poor sleep really affects us, but um, yeah. also suppressing emotions. Uh, it helps. Yes. Uh, well, it doesn't help us. It kind of suppresses, right? Yes. Um, and impacts sleep too. It does, definitely. So uh, one of the things that I just want to mention just a little bit on is medication. So people can be taking medication for mental health, but one thing to be aware of is that some of these medications can impact your sleep, how you're sleeping. So like if someone's taking a medication that is to suppress nightmares because they have PTSD, oh. which they, you know, they rightly might need that medication. But what happens is, is that it doesn't allow them to dream. So they're not, so in order to not have this. nightmares, wow. they're not having that dream state, which impacts that REM state. So then that can have, you know, then that's messing with that natural cycle, that that's natural balance. And vicious everything. cyclical cycle. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So if, you know, for some people they need the meds and if you need the meds and obviously that, you know, you gotta, you gotta outweigh, you know, what's the um, better benefit for you. Um, but if the, if you are on meds and there is a way for you to be able to not be on meds, to look at maybe some natural solutions or something, if that's appropriate for you, then um, I suggest look at it you know, so you can get away from some of those side effects of medications, but medications do have their place. You know, so some people do need them and that's okay. Hold on. I, I want to ask medication. Um, is melatonin medication? Cause that's nope. Oh, it's, and tell me if that not. helps us. Cause I know that's something my, yeah. my, my sister gives to my, my niece um, and my yes. nephew. So I'm just curious yeah. what that even is. I don't even know. Yeah. So melatonin is what we naturally have in our body that helps us with that um, sleep aspect. So when you take a melatonin supplement with kids, you need to be careful because yeah. if you're consistently giving kids melatonin, their body learns not to create it. So it's not producing it. So that's going to mess with them down the road. Okay. Because then their body's not naturally producing that melatonin. So taking melatonin as an adult, you know, like if you're taking it here and there is fine, but with kids, definitely be cautious of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just, just watch how often you're giving it to them. So it doesn't take away from the body's natural ability to produce it. All right. Good to know. Thank you for letting me ask. And also, yeah. so, um, you know, dealing with the emotions in a sense. Um, you yes. know, what did you want to say about that? Yeah. So we are taught many times not to express our emotions, not to talk about our emotions, stuff them down. Don't talk about them. Go. If you're going to cry, go in your room. Don't do it in front of me. Or, you know, like, um, you know, stand up and be, you know, be a big boy or a big girl, you can handle this and you don't need to be crying over it. You know, whatever may be said to us when we're being told that it's telling us to discount our emotions, which then makes us stuff them down. What we really need to do is really need to acknowledge mm -hmm. our emotions when they happen. And it can just be like, you can be upset about something and you can just be like, it's okay that I'm upset about this. I have the right to be upset about this. Why am I feeling upset? Why is this bothering me so much? And just working on processing those emotions more in the moment when you can. Sometimes you can't in the moment and you do have to come back to it. But I okay. encourage people, come back to it. You know, come back to it and deal with those emotions because when you deal with them as soon as you can instead of letting them fester, just allows for you to um, just to release whatever it is in those emotions that are, um, that are holding you back, that are going to hold you down. 
And if you're angry, there's something about if you're angry, if you, if you have anger, you're feeling that always ask yourself, why am I feeling angry? Because there's always emotions below anger. It's not just being angry. There's something else fueling that feeling. So take and look beneath it. And some things, you know, it's like journaling about your emotions, talking to someone. Uh, there's also, you know, the hypnotherapy, we can figure out what's, you know, getting those um, emotions out specifically about what's keeping you stuck. So we'd focus on a specific issue, but we can also use the tuning forks. They calm the nervous system. They get the body to synchronize those energy centers, the chakras, everything to realign. It removes that discoherent energy about the emotions that you're having, clears them out in your field and within your body. And you can use some of these tuning forks on yourself. So like if you're feeling tense and feeling uptight, you can use a sonic slider that has a handle on it and you can just rub it along your muscles to smooth it out, to release those muscles. Or you could just use the sound of the tuning forks to help release those emotions, depending on what sounds best yep. to you for those, um, for those tunes, you know, that are calming for you. But there's many different things that you can do in regards to helping to clear out those suppressed emotions because they're just caught they're just causing disrupted energy in your body disruption physically and it's it's not benefiting you no it is not Uh uh-uh and by the way when you mentioned this uh, tuning forks right um yes this work could all be done virtual right doesn't have to be in person yep yep can be virtual yep Good. And I've seen them before. I just want to make sure. (laughs) (laughs) All right. What else did you want to make sure we cover for today? We have just four (gasps) minutes left. We do. Okay. So, all right. So some, I'm going to throw out some simple, um, like sleep hygiene things that people can do. Hygiene. Yes. Yep. (laughs) So just some things, and you may or may not heard of some of these things. So this might, you know, might be a repeat, but hopefully maybe there's something that might be new for you. So they say to avoid food three hours before sleep. I would say that's uh, a typical like baseline, but sometimes people, some people actually sleep better if they do have some food in their stomach before they go to bed. That is something you have to test yourself to see. Are you a need, almost like an intermittent kind of fasting kind of person where you need those three hours in your sleep time? Um, Or are you someone who might need to eat a little something before bed and that helps you sleep better? Uh, Avoiding screen time, the light, the blue light, all of those things, because all they do is stimulate and they don't allow you to sleep. And that can create more anxiety. Um, when you're trying, like your body's almost trying to fight it. So making sure that you're relaxing at night, taking time to unwind, to get into a place where your mind's shutting down, have a, have a notebook by your bed. If, cause if you wake up with any thoughts, put them down on the notebook. I don't care if it's a task you have to do, just roll over, write it down. And you, there's a good chance you'll be able to fall back to sleep faster than thinking. I got to remember that. I got to remember that. I got to remember that. And then making sure, let's see. Um, oh, this is one I always tell people because I discovered this myself. When you wake up in the middle of the night, notice how your body is. Is it tense? Is it like tight? Are your shoulders up to your ears? Or is it relaxed and loose? If it's tight, then just take and loosen your muscles and relax them. Because I had noticed I was constantly waking up tense. And then I was tense. And, um, when I started to just try to relax them, I felt I could tell my body was going, Oh, okay. I can relax now. And I was able to fall back to sleep. And let's see one last thing, essential oils, essential oils can be great for sleeping. Find one that works for you, like lavender or, um, a special blend that's for sleep. That can be a great benefit and listening to calming sounds too can help. Ah. I love the comments, it's funny. I still have my kids <laughs> there seven and nine, but they are that little calming. Um, oh my gosh, the Fisher Price. It's a, it's a, it's a little light and it makes those uh, night sounds and the yeah. crickets yeah. and then it's all different sounds. Yeah. <laughs> so overall it's, 
really, you know, just look at what your sleep is. If you have a watch, just sleep with it for a week or two and just Mm -hmm. see what it comes up as to see how well are you sleeping and seeing if there's an area you may need to focus on and dress and address those emotions. Make sure you are talking about them, dealing with them. Don't suppress them because they're going to come out in different ways in the body. And is it true if we have, uh, you know, lack consistency with our sleep, we have a shorter life expectancy? Yes. Yes. It can shorten our life. Yeah. Especially those shift workers who are working third shift. There's a huge increase in um, life, decrease in life expectancy and increase in depression. Oh my gosh. Wow. It speaks volumes. Um, okay. Yeah. We don't want this to happen. So how can you help us? Uh, tell us <laughs> and, and, and how can we reach you? <laughs> yes. Okay. So um, you can reach me at rootsofhealing.org. Otherwise you can call me at 920-277-6738 and we can set up initial consult so we can kind of see what you might need help with. I can give you some guidance. We can talk about the different um, options that might work um better for you as an individual, like the tuning forks, hypnotherapy, or something else that might do the trick. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure to have you here. (laughs) Always so organized and thorough, great notes, great topics. Uh, Thank you. Um, And uh, hopefully we'll be back again next week. So rootsofhealing.org, best way to get you? Yes. All right. Thanks again for everything. Have a fantastic day and uh, an even better week. All right. Thank you. Yes, you too. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.